Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to another episode. This time we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be, uh, well, I'm teaching a class. I'm teaching a class over at Scroll Saw Village on how to create Scroll Saw portrait patterns using a program called GIMP. G-I-M-P. GIMP is a freeware program. It's a uh, image uh, manipulation program uh, similar to Adobe Photoshop or Corel Photo Paint. So this class is going to be taking place over at Scrollsaw Village. We have a dedicated forum where we'll have uh, uh, discussions, uh, classroom discussions I guess you could kind of call it, and uh, we're going to put all the resources over there. Uh, basically each uh, lesson is going to kind of build upon the previous lesson. It's going to be a little bit more structured than what we're used to over at Scrollsaw Goodies. Uh, so each lesson will kind of build upon the next, and before before you know it, you'll be a pattern making expert. Uh, each lesson will be, uh, there's going to be two lessons per week. It's going to be released on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Each lesson will include a video, a written out tutorial, as well as any additional supplementary materials. Um, and obviously we'll have class discussions where we could kind of talk about different things. You could ask questions or we, if you run into a little snag you could uh, get a little help uh, over there. The class is going to run for four weeks, so two lessons per week for four weeks. We'll have eight lessons all together. And uh, I hope you uh, jump on and participate with the rest of us. Now this lesson, or these classes, they're going to be up um, you know, if you come back like two years later and you decide you want to take this class, you can still take the class. It's not like I'm going to lock it up or anything like that. Uh, you'll still be able to participate. You'll still be able to get feedback. Uh, the only real advantage of participating in the class while it's going on is that the class discussions tend to be a little bit more um, lively, I guess. Uh, you'll get a little bit more probably a little bit more feedback uh, if you're participating with the rest of us but uh, if uh, your schedule just doesn't allow uh, don't worry it's not like we're gonna remove the class or anything like that you could come back to it at any time so there's good news there uh, so I invite you to swing by Scrollsaw Village uh, you should be able to see uh, some uh, links to the uh, forum or the classroom uh, if not uh, just ask around and somebody will point you away uh, and uh, you know registration is free over at Scrollsaw Village. The class is free. It doesn't cost you anything. Even the program that you're going to use is absolutely free. So you don't have to worry about uh, forking over any money or anything like that. Uh, we're kind of we're in, into the uh, free and open distribution of information, and uh, that's kind of our philosophy. And we're going to go ahead and stick to it. So swing on by. I uh, hope to see you in the forums. And uh, I hope you uh, uh, enjoy the class and um, have a good time with it. Okay, so this is going to be the first lesson. Uh, this is going to be kind of an introductory lesson. I'm going to be talking about, uh, this is the intro. Uh, so let me just kind of go through the syllabus real quick, kind of our game plan of what we're going to try to accomplish in the next four weeks. And uh, we'll take it from there. So obviously this episode or this, uh, this lesson is the introduction uh, which you're participating in now and I'm going to kind of talk about GIMP and what it is and where to download it and also kind of point you in the direction of a few really cool resources that I have stumbled across on the internet. Uh, the next lesson, uh, lesson two, will be what makes a good pattern. Uh, well, there's, there's uh, lots, of, lots of resources available on the internet from uh, uh, photographs to clip art to line art to this and that. I'll kind of teach you or I'll kind of show you uh, uh, what, what, is a, uh, what makes a good pattern and how to get the most from those. And we're going to also talk about uh, the different kinds of patterns. There's a lot of different styles out there. A lot more than I'll ever cover over here. And there's a lot of different techniques for uh, getting to those styles. And... Um, you know, so uh, I'm just going to be showing you how to do one of them in this class. Uh, next lesson will be lesson number three. I'm going to give you a little tour of GIMP. Uh, I'm going to show you the major areas. I'm going to show you some basic tools and uh, basic navigation. And I'm going to kind of show you around, uh, kind of give you the dime tour. 
uh, lesson four, we're going to be creating our workspace. We're going to get everything nice and organized so that when we're ready to create a pattern, we're ready to roll. So we're going to be talking about importing graphics, uh, resizing them, uh, adding uh, uh, guidelines and whatnot. Lesson five is the uh, it's really the meat of the uh, of the show or the uh, class. It's going to be creating your base pattern. Uh, this is really where this is the uh, this is the foundation which we build the entire pattern from. So this will be a really important uh, lesson to pay attention to. Uh, lesson six, we're going to be talking about islands, peninsulas, and lakes. Uh, we're going to be talking about basically uh, uh, the elements that we need to kind of keep in mind when creating scroll saw patterns. Uh, we can't have any like little islands out there. A lot of times we would call them floaties because they just fall right out of the uh, portrait pattern. So we're going to kind of talk about these uh, elements and uh, how to use them in a way to make a really nice scroll saw pattern. Uh, lesson seven, we're going to be dealing with uh, the eyes, mouth, nose, and hair, the features of the face. Uh, I'm just going to kind of show you some tips and tricks there and uh, how to um, uh, translate what you see in the base pattern into something that uh, uh, really works for you because let's face it the features of the face is really how we uh, distinguish one person from the next so this is real important and the very final lesson is the final touches we're going to be checking our work and also learning how to export our work so we can share uh, our patterns with others so it should be a pretty fun class and I hope you join us okay so let's talk about GIMP GIMP is the program we're going to be using in this class. Uh, this is exclusively going to be the program we're going to be using in this class. If you, uh, Many of these techniques I'm going to be teaching you can be translated to other programs. Because uh, really, you only have two basic kinds of programs. You have vector-based programs, which are uh, like um, CorelDRAW or Illustrator or Inkscape. And you have bitmap-based graphic programs like uh, Adobe Photoshop, Corel Photo Paint, and obviously GIMP. So GIMP is dealing with uh, bitmaps or raster graphics. And basically what that means is that um, uh, you're looking at pixels. Uh, so when you zoom into something, you're going to be zooming into actual pixels. Okay, I found a pretty good example over on uh, Wikipedia about raster graphics. And like I was saying, uh, we're going to be using something that deals with bitmaps or pixels. And as you can kind of see in here, we have a little smiley face. And from a distance, it looks really nice. But if you blow it up, you can see the individual pixels, which are blocks of color. And uh, typically when you uh, enlarge a bitmap, you'll get exactly what this is. Uh, a vector-based program is mathematical, um, so you don't get any of this pixelization. Uh, but uh, GIMP is a pixel-based graphics program, and uh, that's what we'll be using in this class. So why would anybody even want to use uh, pixel-based graphics programs if vector is mathematical and you don't get the uh, generation loss or the uh, degeneration of the image. Well, because uh, uh, these type of graphics um, are very common. They're used in photographs. When you scan something, there are bitmaps. Uh, if you take a picture with your digital camera, that too is a bitmap. So bitmaps are everywhere. And since uh, most things, uh, especially on the internet, are bitmap based, uh, we got to learn how to um, uh, how to work with them, and uh, it's really nothing bad. Uh, so uh, it works for everybody else, and uh, w that's what we're going to be working with as well. Let me zoom this out so it's normal again, so we can see everything. Uh, so anyway, uh, GIMP is freeware program. You can find it over at GIMP.org. Now GIMP is kind of a weird word. Uh, GIMP actually stands for new, uh, spelled G-N-U, Image Manipulation Program. Now G-N-U is a licensing term. It uh, basically means it's, uh, it's free. Uh, it's free to distribute. Uh, it's free to have, own, 
um, you could do pretty much whatever you need to with a new GNU uh, license. So that's where the term comes from is new image manipulation program. So uh, GIMP, if you go to GIMP.org, you'll find this page and uh, you'll want to download a copy of GIMP. There's a big old button right in the middle of the screen just just screaming for you to click and download. So you go ahead and click the download button and it's going to take you to a download screen and uh, they have an installer for Windows 2000 and above. Just go ahead and click that and what that's going to do is take you over to SourceForge and in a few seconds um, a window will pop up uh, asking you to save the file and just go ahead and save it to your desktop. I've already installed it so I'm going to click cancel and I'm going to back up a little bit just get back to the home page. Uh, just go ahead and uh, download that and install it. It's uh, pretty easy. Uh, this program is cross-platform, so it works on uh, Macintosh, works on PC, and it works on Linux systems. So it'll work pretty much on anything. Um, let's talk about some resources. Uh, once you download the program, you know you probably want to fiddle around with it, and you might want to learn a little bit more. Uh, there's documentation right online. Just click the documentation button and you'll find uh, user manuals in several different languages. I'm going to click English because I don't speak anything else. And right here is the table of contents. It's just like a user's manual like you normally have with any other software. This is all online. You can download a user manual onto your computer, but I don't recommend you doing this at all. It's very difficult to figure it out. In fact, I couldn't figure out exactly how to install the user manual. And quite honestly, I'm always hooked up to the internet and it's just easier for me to look at the one on the internet as opposed to trying to find one on your local computer. And the one on the internet is going to be updated more often than the one you have on your on your computer. So just if you need to use the user's manual, just use it online. So go ahead and bookmark this page because I'm sure you'll be coming back to it from time to time. Uh, let's back up a little bit. Let's go back to their front page. Um, and really, they don't have a whole lot of uh, extra extra stuff, I guess you could call it. But what they do have is a plug-in registry. Um, GIMP is kind of powerful in the fact that you, uh, it allows third parties to develop plugins to expand the capabilities of uh, GIMP. Uh, we're not going to use any of this. It's fun to actually kind of go look through and play around with and uh, and take a look, see what's available out there. But we're not going to deal, be dealing with any of these in this class. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going to be able to offer a whole lot of support for that. But it is kind of fun to play around with that a little bit. We're just going to be using raw vanilla GIMP to create our scroll saw patterns. Okay, other GIMP resources. YouTube. YouTube is a great place to find video tutorials. Now, most of these video tutorials won't be dealing with the same thing that we'll be dealing with because we have very specific uh, requirements for creating scroll saw patterns. But these uh, classes or these uh, video tutorials are really great uh, just so you could uh, uh, learn a lot of the tools and see exactly what GIMP could actually do for you. So check out YouTube came across this one blog post, 25 GIMP tutorials to help you, help you get started. This has a lot of great uh, video tutorials as well. I'll put a link to this in the show notes as well as in the forums. Uh, so go ahead and look through that if you'd like. There's a website called Design Your Own Web. They have a lot of nice uh, vid uh, GIMP video tutorials as well. It kind of teaches you the basics. Uh, again, I'll have a link to those in the forums. Here's a great podcast called Meet the GIMP. It's a video, it's video tutorials or it's a video podcast on how to do, I don't know, various effects using uh, GIMP as their program. Really cool stuff. A little advanced, but uh, you know, you, you start kind of watching a few of these, you're gonna start picking up a lot of tips. Uh, again, it's not gonna necessarily deal with the things that we're looking for as scroll saw portrait or pattern makers, but uh, it'll certainly uh, teach you how to use the program. So, again, I'll go ahead and put a link to this in the forums. So, 
I think we're going to go ahead and call that it. Uh, we're about 15 minutes in. This was just a quick introduction. Uh, I kind of wanted to give you an overview of what to expect in this class and uh, I think we've accomplished that. So tune in next uh, next week or this next lesson, I guess. Uh, we're going to be releasing that on Thursday. Uh, what makes a good pattern? Again, we're going to be talking about the types of different styles of patterns as well as how to find good resources to make a pattern from. So be sure to check that out. Swing over to scrollsawvillage.com. Uh, you'll find the forum links over there and uh, you can participate in that class and I look forward to seeing you over there. So until next time, happy scrolling.